Hey, everybody, welcome into the Thinking Crypto podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. On your way in, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Folks, we got some additional information as to who's been buying these Bitcoin ETFs that drove the price of Bitcoin to new all time highs before the halving. Today, we heard that Boston based Brace. Bridge Capital has reported owning $433 million of Bitcoin through the ETFs. They bought three ETFs, and the first is ARK at $307 million, the second is BlackRock at $100 million, and the third is Grayscale at $26 million. Eric Balchunas of Bloomberg said they went wild. So folks, it's very fascinating and revealing the type of institutions that have been buying the ETFs because we're seeing it now through the SEC filings. Last week, we got JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Susquehanna uh, reporting on their SEC filings that they own Bitcoin ETF. So uh, big players have been buying, showing there's demand for Bitcoin in this asset class. And this is why the repeal of SOB 121, the bullshit rule from scumbag regulator Gary Genser at the SEC, which prevents banks from holding crypto directly, is so important. We need to get that fully repealed. It obviously got voted to be repealed in the House. It needs to go to the Senate next. But imagine when these banks are able to hold the crypto directly. They're going to buy a lot, guys. So a lot of money will be coming into this asset class. Now, we have to be patient. Bitcoin's still in its pullback consolidation phase. And uh, the bull market's not over, but um, we got to be patient as it consolidates here. Now, we're also seeing that companies globally are looking to put Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Here, we got news that Japanese public company MetaPlanet released a white paper on their Bitcoin corporate treasury strategy. The title of that white paper is Bitcoin First, Bitcoin Only. So this is happening across the globe. In the United States, you got MicroStrategy, you have Tesla and some other companies as well. And there was a fiduciary law that was actually updated or rule uh, last year, which now makes it easy for companies to do this. Uh, it's an accounting rule, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we're going to see more companies do this as inflation is going nuts and the continued debasement of currencies taking place. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see more companies start adding Bitcoin to their balance sheet. Now, guys, let's talk about the top trending coins. And this data is brought to you by Santiment, which provides great crypto analytics and metrics. If you'd like to sign up for a pro account, link will be in the description. You can get a discount using the code Thinking Crypto. We're starting to see some meme coins uh, trend here. Pepe is trending. Although it's positive to negative sentiment is not great. Uh, positive is at 39%, negative at 38%. And coming at number two is bounce bit, BB, with positive sentiment. Number three is USDT on Avalanche with positive sentiment. Coming in at number four is Unitrade, uh, which is that has the ticker symbol trade with positive sentiment. Solana comes in at number six with positive sentiment. Ethereum at number seven with positive sentiment. Dogecoin. Here coming in uh, with positive sentiment at number eight, DYDX coming in with strong positive sentiment, and finally Floki uh, coming in with positive sentiment at number 10. So the meme coins are starting to run again, guys. So this could be a signal that possibly liquidity is coming back in as Bitcoin is finding the bottom. And then, uh, you know, a lot more liquidity will go into Bitcoin and we see the next leg up. Now, like I said, we got to be patient. It may take another couple of weeks before Bitcoin finds that bottom or even towards the end of May. Uh, well, we're halfway in the month right now. So maybe it is towards the end of May into early June that we see that bottom and then the bounce upwards. But right now we got to exercise patience and uh, obviously look for buying opportunities with all coins, not financial advice. Do your own research. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Now, we got some interesting news as crypto is heating up in the political realm. We saw Donald Trump talk about crypto last week, endorsing it. Uh, the SEC uh, saw one to one getting repealed in the House with Democrats joining Republicans, which is a great sign because we have the crypto regulation bill from Patrick McHenry, the FIT bill, which will be voted on uh, in a couple of weeks. And we saw Congressman Ro Khanna, Democrat of California, tweeted out just yesterday that he would support it. Uh, so here, Eleanor Terry of Fox Business is reporting that as we kick off an important two weeks for crypto in the political world, MoonPay is donating one million dollars to stand with crypto the company tells me here's a quote from their ceo 
Today, two things are abundantly clear. This year's election will define the future of our industry in the United States, and it is our responsibility to step up and stand alongside those organizations that genuinely wish to positively advance this innovation for everyone. Wow, folks, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a ton of capital being raised by different organizations and PACs that are going to support pro-crypto candidates, guys. And I think Elizabeth Warren and her anti-crypto army are dead in the water. Um, we saw on Super Tuesday, people who are lying themselves with her started losing and pro-crypto candidates were winning. The money is now coming in. Money speaks in politics. And look, I wish the crypto industry had done this years ago, but uh, uh, and nevertheless, we are here now. They are raising capital. Uh, we know attorney John Deaton is running against Elizabeth Warren. If you are in the state of Massachusetts, vote for John Deaton. Uh, if you're outside the state of Massachusetts, donate to John Deaton. I've donated. And he, if he's able to take that seat from her, that would be incredible. Uh, but crypto is here to stay. We are seeing a massive shift in narrative around crypto from many candidates. And like I said, Democrats joining Republicans to uh, pass different bills and so forth. So Stand With Crypto PAC launches as industry interest in campaign funding ramps up. So here's another example. The 501c4 nonprofit organization has not yet filed any disclosures, but noted plans to support two Democrats and three Republicans in congressional races and those who are pro-innovation and pro-crypto. So, uh, guys, we are seeing the, the industry just going on the offensive here, and I'm loving it. Now, Ron Hammond of the Blockchain Association, uh, I have an interview that will be published tomorrow with him where we go into a deep dive into all the re crypto regulations items. Uh, but he gave some quick updates here, with, which I thought were really great. I'm not going to read through everything because it's a very long thread. But he said, given former President Trump's positive comments on crypto and some cringe political takes, the only thing on this topic I'll say from a D.C. perspective is that this is election year politics. Anytime there's a demographic or votes to pick up, candidates will go in that direction. It isn't the president, though, that has been the obstacle for crypto. It has been the agencies pushing their bounds and Congress not asserting their role. The polling doesn't lie, and several have shown that it is an issue that young people care about, an area Biden isn't doing well. And Ron gave some great insights here because it's many of the agencies. It's Gary Genser and controlled by Elizabeth Warren. It's not Biden waking up saying, yeah, I hate Bitcoin, I hate crypto, right? We know that, but it's Elizabeth Warren who's running the finance regulatory aspect of his administration. My hope is that the Biden administration changes their tone and their gears here, but we'll see, especially now that Trump is you know, putting a stake in the ground saying, I support crypto. Um, Ron says, Trump inserting himself in crypto has little political risk, but major benefit given the bipartisan campaign wins crypto has been picking up in the primaries. For Democrats, there is a recognition that this is a bad issue for Biden. Alienating a younger base will also have consequences. So I'll leave it at that, but very insightful, folks. And and be sure to catch my interview, my full interview with Ron Hammond in the morning. We talk about the FIT bill, the Saab 121 repeal, what happens next, Genser, when is he going to appear, and, and much more. Uh, so be sure to check that out in the morning. Now, there's something else that's happening, and uh, Alexander Grieve, um, who is government affairs at Paradigm, tweeted out, he said, great letter from Senator Lummis and Ron Wyden to the DOJ regarding the DOJ's recent arguments to expand their interpretation of what constitutes a money transmission business. The TLDR here is money transmission requirements, accepting and transmitting money, providing wallet service does not qualify. So they're trying to throw crypto wallets as you know some sort of money transmission uh, uh, the, the platform and that you need some license, but that's ridiculous, right? Right. Um, because the blockchain, look, at the end of the day, you can trace everything anyway. So we got to educate these different agencies. We got to educate these people and push back where there is overreach and where they're breaking the law because we've seen the SEC break the law in trying to attack the industry. So 
uh, we got to fight. We, we got to stand up for, for our rights here. The industry has to raise capital, keep donating, and much more. Now, guys, quick word from our sponsor, and that is BitGo. BitGo is one of the top crypto custodians in the market. They provide tier one level custody and uh, a ton of other services that are being used by big brands in the industry, such as Bitstamp Exchange, Bitcoin IRA, Pantera Capital, and Nike uses BitGo's wallet service for their NFTs. Some of the services that BitGo offers include hot wallets, custodial wallets, self-managed cold wallets, and NFT wallets. So if you'd like to learn more about BitGo, visit the link in the description. Now, we continue to see many different voices come out and criticize the SEC and Gary Genser. Mark Cuban's been on a tear lately. If you guys follow him on Twitter, uh, he's just been criticizing Genser, saying he has never protected a single investor against fraud. And Peter Brandt, who's a legendary trader, I actually interviewed him today, uh, he tweeted out, in my opinion, Gary Genser is not a protector of investors. Gary Genser, as the CFTC chairman, was the getaway driver in the MF Global slash John Corzine robbery and bankruptcy in 2011. Go research that, guys. Uh, Genser is a corrupt individual. Genser allowed Corzine to attack the sanctity of the U.S. customer segregated account, moving customer money without the knowledge of said customers to Europe to meet margin calls on the bet that bankrupted MFG. So all happened under Gary Genser's watch. What else happened under Gary Genser's watch? Celsius. FTX, of course, right? This is why I call him a scumbag regulator. This guy is a, a puppet and he's paid off. He's just doing the bidding of his taskmasters. Now, speaking of the SEC, Paul Graval, chief legal officer at Coinbase, tweeted out the following. In a brief to avoid dismissal of its case against debt box with prejudice, the SEC includes a remarkable admission that it did not follow its own typical Wells process when it refused to tell us what assets would be charged as securities. Here's a quote. The Wells process is designed to aid the charging decision for a specific potential defendant. The SEC staff typically provides a thorough explanation of the evidence it would use to provide potential charges against a particular person or entity. Um, we received no thorough explanation of the evidence of what assets supposedly gave rise to securities transactions. We weren't told what assets were at issue at all. Why would the government not follow its typical process in our case? And what does it say about its claims? So, folks, <laughs> let me break it down here. Typical scumbag activities from a scumbag regulator. They will lie. They will cheat. They will break the law to try to get their way because it's an it's a political agenda, right? Elizabeth Warren's pulling the strings of Gary Genser, so he's just doing that. So they don't care. That's why the judge sanctioned the SEC in this case, guys, because they lied to the court. And notice the double standards and the hypocrisy. And I've been saying it for a while. In the Coinbase, in the Kraken case, in the Robinhood case, in the Debtbox case, they throw a bunch of tokens in there. They don't litigate each of those projects individually. They just say they're securities. They don't say why they're securities, right? So they don't give those individual pro projects due process. And they will break their own process, and like not following the typical Wells process as they did with Deadbox. And uh, just, just so they can fabricate things and, and break the law, obviously, it's pathetic. This is why I'm, I keep saying we got to fight, call up your representatives, tweet out the facts, use social media to your advantage, make content, do what you got to do. I'm doing my part. Donate to pro crypto uh, candidates as well like John Deaton and others and uh you know support any type of political action committee as well if if you can. So, we got to keep fighting folks. All right guys, that's the news. Uh let me know what you think, leave your thoughts and comments below. Don't forget to uh grab a copy of my book, Rethinking Crypto: The Crash of FTX and the Rise of Safer Stronger Assets. It's available on Amazon in digital and paperback. Uh, grab a copy to support the podcast, grab a copy and share it with a family or a friend uh, who doesn't understand crypto, wants to learn, or is a skeptic. So uh, I wrote this book to give the holistic view about crypto and what it, its future looks like. So the past, present, and future folks, so be sure to check it out. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll talk to you all later.